These prehistoric temples are located on a plateau overlooking the Grand Harbor and were inhabited by some of Malta's earliest ancestors. This site was also used by the Phoenicians and then by the Greeks, followed by the Romans, and are located in the vicinity of other important sites. Originally, there were three temple complexes, but two of these have been destroyed, and only the site of Cordine III survives. Cordine I consisted of small and irregular rooms and was poorly preserved when it was discovered. The temple was open to the elements and aerial bombardment during World War II and virtually nothing remained by the 1950s. It was completely obliterated after an industrial estate was built on the site in the 1960s. Cording II was located on the northern extent of Corradino. It was used throughout the entire temple period. The first investigations of Cording II were undertaken in 1840. The site was first excavated properly in 1892, and excavation work continued in 1901 and was finished in 1909. Part of the temple was destroyed by the Royal Engineers in 1871 to make way for the ditch of the Corradino Lines and was further damaged by aerial bombardment during World War II. In the 1960s, the site was built up as an industrial estate. Corradine III is the only temple on Corradino. It is located just outside the Corradino Lines. The Cordine III complex consists of two temples. The larger one has a standard three apse plan. The temple has a concave facade with the forecourt and entrance passage to the central court being stone paved. This stone paving is unique to Cordine III as this has not been found in any other temples of Malta. The first part of the temple is believed to have been built in around 3700 BC. The site is believed to have been abandoned in around 2500 BC. A 2.75 meter long trough was found lying across the entrance to the temple's left apse, and this is generally considered as the most notable feature of the site. It is made of hard limestone brought from over two kilometers away. Many theories revolve around this stone. Was it for grinding corn? Or was it a megalith forming part of the main structure? In 1882, further clusters of megalithic monuments in the area were discovered, and the site was properly excavated in 1909. Other excavations were undertaken in 1953 and in 1961. The remains were included on the Antiquities List of 1925.